Mumtaz Mohammed. I am working for Tall Grass, and let us talk something about uh, uh, Java. In what way it is useful for you all in the future uh, endeavor? And see, guys, here in Java, basically we go with two concepts. One is core, and other one is of advanced. Where advanced, we call it as is useful for you to develop web applications. And in advance, what all we learn is three basic uh, areas we go with. One is JDBC, the other one with servlets, and then JSPs. Those people who learn Core Java will be able to develop their standalone applications. And see here, we will be going with around 10 to 12 chapters, uh, like uh, understanding about OOPs concepts, and then uh, the other stuffs and all. And in Java, whoever learns Java can develop basically four types of applications. As I told you, one is standalone application, the other one is of web application, and the other one is of Android, and the other one is of enterprise or as distributed or distributed applications. See, those who have learned Core Java. They can go in three different categories. One is they can go to they can become a web developer after developing the um, learning these three advanced topics, and after learning core, they can go for Android. We call it as J2ME, where they will be developing like Android applications or as mobile applications. And once they have learned core and then advanced, they will be going to develop distributed applications where they have to learn frameworks. Frameworks like we have now going on as Struts and then Springs as well as the other one is of Hypernet. These are the three frameworks we learn after we go with Core, Advanced and then these three. You can choose any of the three or as all the three, it's up to you, that depends upon your standards. So this is what you can develop yourselves or as plan yourselves in where, where I can fit it, either one Core or else web or else I can go for Android or else distributed applications. And then once you enter into the core Java, first of all, people who come from Triple E or else EC people, they feel that is Java is comfortable, am I, though, am I into the comfortable zone, uh, is it easy or else I want to learn C or else I want to know C++ to know Java. As I am telling you, to learn Java, it is not necessary for you to know C and then C++ in depth. Why? Because it is an inherited concept, inherited programming language of C++. And in from C, what are we are taking is all the data types, the conditional statements, the other things and all we are inheriting to the Java. And the people who come other, other than computers like Triple E or else EC or else mechanical, civil, the other categories people can learn Java in a very simpler manner. The reason behind that is the first feature of Java itself, the peop, um, they'll tell that it's simple. And Java has been developed by Mr. James Gosling. And maybe you're in your schooling, maybe 1996, I don't know, you'll be in your uh, schooling uh, nursery standards at the time. So 1996, the, the Java has been introduced to the world. And when they have introduced Java to the world, they named it as Yoke. And after that, they have gone on enhancing the versions. And the latest version that you are learning now is Java is 8th version. 8th version is what the latest version of Java. And it is not into completely, people are not using 8th version into the projects. They are using 7th, but they are habitualizing to work out in 8th. But now in the tall grass, we are going with Java 8th version. Yeah. And when we go on learning, some enhanced features are there from 7 to 8. When you see lots of uh, enhanced features are there, some things are being deprecated from the API, some, uh, some has been uh, added to the API. Uh, so, why I am telling this is people will think that if the newest uh, new versions been came into the world, they will think that enhanced versions only. No, some ver something they have also deprecated. Uh, deprecated in the sense some methods, some functionality, some concepts, they felt that it is not that much useful, so they have also deprecated that um, uh, functionalities also. So guys, when you enter into the Java, first feature what they tell us, it is simple. 
that's why i'll tell all my students who ever come from other than computers background it's comfortable for you to understand java but the thing is you have to work hard to learn and uh, you have to work hard to do lots of programs so the next version when you go i mean the next feature when you go with the first one is simple i think it's a very relaxed statement no simple java simple uh, simple in what way is it simple is because we have very predefined very uh, huge predefined functionalities in java like we have a very huge api api in the sense in c++ you have header files include a uh, std word.h in uh, c in c++ you have io stream.h header files we have in java we have that api where we call them as packages these packages have been predefined it's been maintained and now this is been maintained in the jvm i mean in the software that makes your life simpler so we are using lots of predefined functionalities into your application and making your life so simpler so we tell that java is simple and when we go on the next feature we tell that java is robust the literature meaning of robust is strong what makes java strong what makes java strong is java is implicitly maintaining an efficient memory management system in java it's implicitly maintained it's implicitly maintained in the sense uh, see uh, i uh, how can you justify like efficient memory management because of this feature java is robust and robust is a very good uh, feature of java because see i'm creating an object object or a variable whatever it is after some period of time we are not using it okay then uh, why should i allocate memory for it did you understand this point i have an object or as a variable whatever the thing is after some period of time after a very long period of time we stopped using it then the memory that has been allocated for this object why can't i once again reuse it if i want to reuse it what should i do i want to deallocate the memory for this object and then that can be reused this is implicitly happening in java with a concept called garbage collector this is an implicit object available in java this makes java robust yeah and then the next one um it's secured java is secured why java is secure what makes it secure because in java we don't have pointers concept while you are learning your ce your faculty might have told that pointers what is how some concept it is yeah very good very that that this this but when you go on people will tell that there you don't learn it but in java since pointers are not there java is secure means the ultimate goal telling that pointers are not secure am i right why pointers are not secured because pointers are basically uh, focused on uh, addresses so if the addresses changes the values may be changing also the end of the story we are focusing more on values no rather than on addresses do you all agree my point see if i want to you meet you i want to meet you man i don't want to come to your address to meet you did you all understand this point so what they have done this java team they have totally removed this pointer since pointers are not there i can tell you java is secure yeah if you go on like this lots of features are there secured and then portable java is portable i means portable means very small java it's not like java software is small java programming the less lines of code it you can write a program in java with a very less lines of code Well, how is this been achieved in java again the same answer i can give you because it's having a huge api huge api in the sense predefined methods predefined classes predefined interfaces all the stuff we have that makes java portable and the other feature you can go that java is object oriented programming language object oriented means again it have lots of features around five features we have and that is of we can go with classes object and then encapsulation abstraction polymorphism and then inheritance class object encapsulation abstraction polymorphism inheritance 
when a programming language is following all these features we call that programming language as object oriented programming language java is following all these six yeah and the other one is it is multi threaded java is multi threaded and the other one is java is distributed programming language distributed in the sense you can develop enterprise applications also and the last but not the least i am keeping it pending the last one is it is last but one nahi hai do hai one is it is compiled and interpreted java is both compiled and interpreted programming language and the last one it is platform independent this too is what is ruling java forever people will tell that why are you learning java people will tell them ma'am it's evergreen some people some people will tell tell that we have lots of opportunities but why lots of opportunities or as why it is evergreen because it's compiled and interpreted because of this reason i can tell that java is platform independent platform independent in the sense i am least bothered about what os you are maintaining if i have a software i am comfortable in executing it i mean compiling it and all other stuff here again two things i want to ask you what is compilation and interpretation see compilation in the sense once you write a program you write it in generally your high level programming say we have three generations first generation is machine machine language second generation we call it as assembly we have four generations i think you might have learned in your schooling itself first generation we call it as machine language second generation assembly language third one is of your high level language what you ever you write once you write the program we should have a translator to translate your high level to machine am i right who is doing that for you is your compiler compiler is a system software what the compiler work is it translates your high level to machine level why because the system can understand only machine level that work is been done by the compiler and compiler work is the complete program is been translated from the starting to the end the complete program is been translated and as per the rules and regulations needs to be followed by the programming language that errors if you haven't followed the syntax errors will be focused in the compilation process and what is interpretation interpretation work is almost all the same only thing is while it also translates your high level to machine but whenever the first error is been found there it stops translation there it will be telling you boss here this is the error what you have done so you just clarify that and again from there onwards again the other the next statement onwards the translation again starts that is been done by the interpreter but some people will ask me like why ma'am why java is compiled and interpreted programming like it's not for security reasons in compilation as i told you it translates your high level to machine but here java software itself is maintaining compiler remember compiler is a system software java software itself is maintaining compiler and it is also maintaining interpreter implicitly in c and then c++ software is different compiler is different it's not that when you have a software we can compile the program you should also have compile you should maintain compiler in your system then only your c c program can be compiled but here when you have java software your program can be compiled your program can be interpreted and in the compilation process in java while you are writing the program and compiling it it's not directly translating to machine code it is translating to byte code where byte code is been found in hexadecimal yeah and in the interpretation process what's happening is this byte code is been translated to machine code this is happening because of this reason java is platform independent because if you observe here my compiler and interpreter is not there in os it is there in the software itself so because the compiler and interpreter both are there maintained in the software itself my java is platform independent because java is platform independent you guys are all sitting in front of me and i am also stay standing in front of you and you all are learning java even though you are coming from other than computers background i am mechanical ece triple e all these guys are learning java it's not because of it is easy because it is platform independent because it is compiled and interpreted these are all features are all been included in lo, uh, almost all the programming languages yeah guys 
so in the first level you understood what are the features of java i have seen you some given some points like simple robust secure portable object oriented multi threaded uh, i think the distributed compiled and interpreted platform independent it's a platform independent programming language yeah guys so uh, this is java features and again we'll go with object oriented what is exactly object oriented and all other stuff 